Hey folks, something a little bit different today. As any PC gamers got to be aware, the Steam Summer Sale of 2018 has been and gone, so I thought I'd share with you a few of the buys from the sale and discuss whether or not the games I've bought were worth the price, and if you should even consider them at non-sale prices. Wanting to have a decent mix of titles, I started off the Steam hunt by going back to the past, way back to the past, a game that I can remember buying, or rather being bought. Back when we first got our family PC, a Pentium MMX166 with 16MB of RAM, a Sound Blaster sound card and a Voodoo graphics card, the legendary Quake 2. Now booting it up on a modern system, the high resolution 640x480 I remember being so amazing, well certainly compared to the 320x240 of software anyway, was pretty underwhelming, but that doesn't mean that Quake 2 has been relegated to being unplayable. There are some really nifty patches, I'm using the Yamagi patch here, which is absurdly easy to install, being available as a one-click executable, and this adds more modern GPU support, as well as high resolution monitor support, meaning that I was able to download the game and mod and get the game running at 1080p ultrawide in less time than it would have originally taken for me to install the game from the CD back in 1997. And the results, well it's quite simply fantastic, Quake 2 is a very simplistic shooter by today's standards, but the pulsing metal soundtrack, super slick controls and nostalgic but clean looks means that it's even more of a joy to play through than I remember it being as a kid. The story is typical 1990s throwaway affair, you're a marine that crash lands after an invasion goes wrong and you've basically got to fight your way out of an alien stronghold, taking out everything in your path. NPCs are either there to kill you or be killed and that's all you really need to know. For the time, Quake 2 was the pinnacle of PC gaming and being able to play through it again with support from modern hardware is brilliant and at less than £1 it's a piece of PC gaming history that everybody should play at least once even at its normal price of £3.99. Jumping into something a tad milder now with a game that I first played on the Amiga, The Curse of Monkey Island, or more particularly the remastered special edition version. This is a LucasArts point and click pirate adventure game from 1990, and if you've never played one of these then you really owe it to yourself to at least try one out. The writing in these games are as witty, smart and on the point as it was nearly three decades ago, and the special editions we've got here allows with the press of a button to switch between gorgeous redrawn visuals and the original scum interface. This is the kind of game that you only intend to play for 30 minutes or so, but you can quickly find yourself being sucked into the world with its great writing and beautifully remastered soundtrack. If you've ever found yourself sitting at your desk with a severe case of FPS fatigue and want something different, then this would be the perfect antidote for that. The great romp through the very tongue-in-cheek world of Guybrush Threpwood is almost therapeutic in 2018, and it's a great way to see where PC gaming was before Doom was even a twinkle in John Carmack's eye, and for under 3 quid, or even the usual price of £8 here in the UK, it's definitely worth a punt. Fast forward in about quarter a century or so to a game that I always wanted to play, but having a PlayStation 4 as a console of choice, I never was able to. The Xbox, I mean sorry, Microsoft exclusive, Quantum Break. Or should that really be Quantum Broke? I mean it's been two years since the even worse DirectX 12 port of this game limped onto the Microsoft Windows Store, and while the later Steam DirectX 11 version which was released in September of 2016 is generally considered to be better, it's still a bit of a mess. The system I'm running as my main rig consists of an overclocked Ryzen 7 CPU, 24GB of DDR4-3200 memory and a GTX 1088GB, which constantly holds its boost clocks above 2GHz. On top of that, I'm not exactly gaming at a super high resolution, with my main monitor being a 2560x1080 ultrawide, still Quantum Break grinds the system to a crawl at anything bar medium settings. Having a look over on Digital Foundry's analysis of the game on Xbox One and PC, they kinda come to the conclusion that the medium preset is basically what the Xbox runs at, so to be getting that level of lower visual fidelity, albeit with a frame rate closer to 60fps than 30, it's a pretty unforgivable case of dreadful game optimization, which is a shame because when the game works, it's actually quite good. 
it's absolutely not on par with other console exclusives like Uncharted 4 or Horizon Zero Dawn in terms of actual gameplay or the visual quality, but the developer, Remedy of Max Payne fame, does create an interesting world with a decent sci-fi story and the gunplay is really good when it works. If it was a TV show, it could be something that you could easily binge through a night on Netflix for example. Speaking of Netflix, the gameplay levels are interwoven with 30 minute or so TV show segments, which are certainly better than the usual live action film sections we see in some games. Again, this is like an ok Netflix show, which for a game I guess could be pretty high praise. These sections are streamed though, so if your connection is capped or you've got limited bandwidth, expect to see the buffering notification pop up more than once per episode. All in all though, it's a decent if not spectacular game, engaging while at the same time being completely forgettable and infuriatingly badly optimised. In the Steam sale, it cost me £7.49, which was certainly an easier pill to swallow than if I bought the game at the normal £30. But even really at the lower price, there's better ways to spend a few quid. The game won't be getting any further optimizations, so my advice is maybe wait until hardware speeds up by such a large amount that the ineptitude of the port is masked by brute force. So it could be a must buy in the under £5 section of the Steam 2021 summer sale then. The last game on the list is one that really highlighted the poor value of Quantum Break. For its hefty price of £2.69, I picked up Just Cause 3, a game that came out only two and a half years ago. And while it's by no means the best looking game ever made, it is one of the most fun games that I've played in years. Take the mayhem and destruction of going off piste in GTA 5, strip out the stale mature content designed to appeal to 10 year old kids, throw in an Antonio Banderas esque hero, and enough grappling hook action to make Spider-Man jealous and you've got a sandbox which is fun, funny and gives you plenty of Hollywood style explosions and one liners which never feel out of character with the game. It's also about as open world as an open world can be, giving you your trademark grappling hook and parachute combo as well as a raft of weapons from the off. The in-game physics are designed to be manipulated like weapons as much as a rocket launcher and the game offers up numerous ways to complete your missions within these confines. I said that the game wasn't great looking and that's perhaps been a bit too harsh, it's just not triple A level of polish. But to be honest, in the face of so many straight faced action games which seem more concerned about pushing across some vendi- I mean message a developer jotted down between skinny Thai lattes, it's a brilliantly refreshing game. There is a story in the game somewhere but all you really need to know is you're Rico Rodriguez and you're going to liberate your homeland one explosive silo at a time. At the original price of $17.99, it might be a little bit harder to justify, especially with the fourth game hitting the shelves at the end of 2018, but if you value fun above all else, then it would be easy to recommend you opening your Steam wallet next time it's on sale, even if it doesn't drop down to the lows of £2.69 like it did this time. So that's it for the Steam Summer Haul of 2018, a pretty varied spread of titles this time around, three hits and one miss and a total of £13.61 spent, that's a lovely 77% off, not too shabby all things considered. But I'm going to leave it there folks, I'd love to know what you've snagged in the summer sale and if you disagree with any of my picks. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already and of course I'll see you all in the comments section down below and in the next video.